This is Concepts of Mechanical Ventilation, and I will be going over ideal body weight. What is ideal body weight, and why is it important? So first, what is ideal body weight? Ideal body weight is basically based on, there's two things, there's two factors. One is the person's height, so it doesn't matter, there's going to be differences if you're um, shorter versus taller. And then there's also going to be gender-based differences. So if you're male versus female, there's the gender base. So there's going to be differences there. And it's important because we want to use ideal body weight when we set our tidal volume or when we target a tidal volume. so that we meet our ventilatory needs for the patient. And we also look at ideal body weight for setting a minute ventilation also. And we can look at those two previous videos I did on tidal volume and minute ventilation and how ideal body weight is important when you're setting those thresholds. Now, how do we calculate um, ideal body weight? Well, here's me. Oh, sorry. I skipped the area. So I was going to talk about ideal body weight. So why do we use ideal body weight versus actual body weight? So I'm going to use me as an example. So here's average me. This is at my ideal body weight. And then I'm going to say here's me and I do a lot of working out and take a lot of protein shakes and everything else. And then I get real big and muscular. Those are my biceps. However, I'm looking like those bodybuilder guys that just work on their upper body, south these skinny legs. So say I gain 20 pounds here. Or we'll take the other extreme, sorry, extreme, and say I'm one of those marathon runner guys. And then I'm also a vegan too, so I get real anorexic and skinny. And then say I drop 20 pounds. I'm lazy. So I gain another 30 to 40 pounds. And then I become obese. There we go. So I look kind of more like a potato. So now I'm obese. So if we look at all these pictures, my body stature has changed quite dramatically by adding and dropping weight. However, if we look at my lung mass, if you know I would have died because I was too obese, or if I ate too little, or if I worked out too much and you did an autopsy, my lung mass would be the same. So it would be the same if I was here, 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 and here. And since I'm free sketching, you know, they look a little different, but I'm just trying to make them all the same size. So my lung mass remains unchanged. So I'm just making the change symbol with a dash through it. So it doesn't matter what, how much weight I gain when I'm an adult, my lung mass is not going to change. So my tidal volume that I'm going to target should be consistent also. And this would be based on my ideal body weight. This is what I was foreshadowing earlier. How do we calculate ideal body weight? In the ideal world, we would have an ideal body weight chart with every ventilator. So I know there are some respiratory care departments that actually have these ideal body weight charts with their ventilators along with a tape measure or a measuring tape, whatever you want to call it, so they can actually measure how tall the patient is to find out their ideal body weight. But not everybody's respiratory care department or ICU is an ideal ICU. So we still have to calculate this sometimes. We had to put it in our scientific calculator or as we're as students we're going to have to do this anyway you're going to have to do it on a test um, calculated well the most important thing is we need one thing the only thing we need is the patient's height and then we can plug everything else to the equation and the equation i'm going to use i'm going to be using inches 
And this is going to figure out an ideal body weight in pounds. And most likely we're going to have to change this to kilograms because this is more specific to the medical profession. So we're going to have to use the conversion factor, which I'll show from changing from pounds to kilograms. Now these are two equations, and these are the equations that I use for ideal body weight. There's other equations. Some are based on actually insurance data, and they look at more of the body stature of the patient's um, average frame versus um, a large frame, and they're more specific. And some hospitals and institutions use this. However, this is what I've learned, and this is kind of what I use for my ideal body weight. So as you notice, it's gender specific. I have the male and I have the female here. And the only difference, if we look at the differences, is the 106 versus 105 and the plus five versus the plus six. And just remember the ideal body weight with this equation is gonna be in pounds. And when we use the height, it's going to be used, uh, it's going to be in inches when we plug it into the equation. So I'm going to use myself as an example. I know how tall I am, or how tall I say I am. So I am a male, and I am 5 foot 9 inches. However, So there is 12 inches per every foot, so I take the 5, I multiply that by 12, and that equals 60 inches, and then I take this leftover 9 inches and I just add that in. So I am a total of 69 inches tall. And now I can put this into the ideal body weight formula. So let's go put the ideal body weight formula in again. Okay, so for males, my ideal body weight equals 106 plus 6. And let's multiply it by my height, minus 60. So my height, that's what I'm going to plug in, is 69 inches. And I subtract that by 60. And by order of operations, I'm going to do the parentheses first. So that gives me 69 minus 60 equals 9. And that gives me 106 plus 6 times 9. Order of operations, i got to multiply, multiply the 6 into the 9. So that's 106 plus 54, and that equals the ideal body weight of approximately, or not approximately, actually 160 pounds. That's nice and even. So my ideal body weight is 160 pounds. However, we need to figure out what that is in kilograms. So simple conversion factor is, oh, Got a little ahead of myself. I'm just going to clear that page. So to put it in kilograms, kilograms equals just my pounds divided by 2.2. So to figure out my kilograms, my ideal body weight, body weight in kilograms, I'm going to put 160 divided by 2.2. Two point seven two kilograms or equals approximately or equal to seventy three kilograms. So once I know this, I can use this for targeting a tidal volume or minute ventilation. So let's look at volume control ventilation. As you can see here, I have my minute or my tidal volume setting of five hundred. And let's see, a, we want to target anywhere from 8 to 10 milliliters 
tidal volume per ideal body weight. And that's a common setting for a patient that has normal pathology, no acute lung injury, no COPD, anything else. This target tidal volume should not affect me. So to do that, I can take the 73 kilograms and we could just target a tidal volume of 700 cc's and that'll be on the little high side, that's approximately 10. However, with normal pathology, it should be fine. Now another mode of ventilation, or some ventilators, what they do is when you're putting a new patient in, so this is kind of like a standby screen, and it allows me to put in patient information. As you notice here, I have a patient, I'm just going to highlight it to make it stand out. I have an adult patient in male, so I'm selecting a gender. And then as you notice these two settings right here, well one's a setting and then the other is actually a smart key. So the operator puts in the patient's height and that will automatically calculate an ideal body weight. So th this ventilator uses that in volume targeted modes. It'll set a tidal volume, a preset it lung protective tidal volume. And then for adaptive support ventilation, it'll set rules on how much tidal volume to give also. However, what I don't like is if we notice centimeters. So this is real frustrating to me since I live in the United States and I didn't grow up with the metric system. And I never heard anybody, or I don't have any friends that say, I'm 172 inches, or I'm 172 centimeters tall. So we usually go in inches, and we don't even use inches, we go in feet. So I don't walk around saying I'm 172 inches tall, whatever it is. I say I'm 5 foot 9. Or I lie, I might say I'm a little taller. So what's the conversion factor? How do I change inches into centimeters if I was using this ventilator and wanted to put in the patient's height and get my ideal tidal volume? Let's clear that out. So my conversion factor is, so we have one inch equals 2.5 five four centimeters so if we look at me again I'm going to use myself again because I know how tall I am that's what the doctor says I am when I go in for my yearly physical and I'm 69 inches so I want to multiply that 69 inches so I multiply that 69 inches times 2.54 and that gives me 175.26 centimeters. So I'm approximately 175 centimeters. So now I tell people I'm 175 centimeters to throw them off. Or if I was this patient, I could ch change this setting here. And to get my ideal body weight, I would change that to 175, and this would auto adjust to. That you could just put in the patient's height, and you don't have to do any calculations at all. However, you might run into this um, centimeter situation here, so you have to know the conversion factor per centimeter. So that's all about ideal body weight. Thank you.